On your left, Michael Hamilton is on your right. It's in fact, it's Mardu Hollowan and Barrich will be on the play here. We'll give him the green light, and we'll be underway here in just a moment. Should be a good one between the two. And again, remember, the winner of this match going on to the finals here at SCG Con our Season 1 Invitational. And that is a turn one play that you got to love here, Aaron. It's not a Serum Visions. It's not a Glistener Elf. It's a Noble Hierarch. Yeah, Noble Hierarch is one of the better openers for Infect. I noticed there was a correlation of games I won with Infect when I played a Eternal Noble Hierarch versus any other spell. Uh, it's just the card that gives you the biggest bolster and the greatest chance to win if it survives and you get to untap with it. Hamilton will draw a card. It'll be a copy of Bloodstained Mire. You know, one of the things that's always interesting about playing against Infect, too, is there's a Lightning Bolt. And I was going to ask you this question right away is, do you Lightning Bolt the Hierarch or do you wait to try to get an Infect threat? So it, it can be dangerous to, to let your Infect opponent uh, untap and have mana to use protection spells. Taking them off the mana source of Nova Hierarch will often leave them stranded with just a single mana. Luckily for Aaron Barrich, though, he does have access to more lands, so he is more likely to, uh, you know, make this game go a little bit longer and not just lose because he kept a one-lander noble hand. This will be a Glistener off there for Barrich along with an Ink Moth Nexus. Now both players are going to draw three cards. Let's get a little randomization going here, as this should be a lot of fun. I love watching a Burning Inquiry resolve. It can definitely help or it can hurt, depending on how things do go. And it's not up to you, Aaron or Michael. It is up to the magical gods. So these players are going to lay out their hands. They're going to lose some cards at random here in just a moment. Aaron could lose three pump spells here, which would be a disaster. Yeah, but he also can fuel his delve spell with Become Immense. Very true. Very true. Michael Hamilton's going to lose land, land, land. That could be bad, bad, bad. Barrich is going to lose a couple of cards there. Don't have a great look at his just yet, but there is a Become Immense that's now put, been placed in the graveyard. So, Michael Hamilton. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah. Two blockers, definitely great for Michael Hamilton. However, that Ink Moth Nexus is looming. Aaron Barrich with a big old smile on his face. Maybe he's got a little something good going oh, on. No, Maybe he's not. Mad. No, he's so sad. I think he might have discarded three pump spells. Hmm. You know, with all of these promo alternate art stuff, I know what the regular cards look like. I have no idea what that card on the bottom is. I do know there's Become Immense in the graveyard there. Might have Old Croja too. We can find out what that last card is in Aaron's graveyard in just a moment. My guess, Might of Old Croja promo in the dark. And now we got a Flame Blade adapt here for Michael Hamilton. And that card's actually a blossoming defense. It's just a nice ah, one. It's a foil one. So we're going to go back over to Aaron gotcha. Barish now. And I think his hand stinks. Oh, his hand stinks. He's got a bunch of lands in his hand, I think. You know, that can happen, but this is a game that Infect can still win. Oh, yeah. That was a crushing burning inquiry, making him discard three pump spells. But he has access to a second copy of Ingmoth Nexus. He's going to be able to attack for one. And if he draws a Become Immense or just running plus four, plus four spells over the next two turns, he has a chump block with the Glistener Elf. He could still win this game. Take a look at Barrett. He's just going to come across here for one Infect. One of his favorite players, Tom Ross. You see that Infect token out there with one for Michael Hamilton. Another Glistener Elf just going to pass the turn back. But you saw Michael's explosive turn last turn with two Hollow Ones and a Flame Blade Adept. Now he will draw a card. He's picked up a copy of Blood Gas to go along with a Goblin Lore in hand. So now he'll play Goblin Lore. And Flame Blade Adept's going to get even larger. So Hamilton's going to draw four cards. He'll randomly discard three. Though when you're playing against Hollow One, it always doesn't feel so random, Todd. No, I mean, half the time you're discarding things that, that can come back from the graveyard or be cast from the graveyard, or you're just fueling your larger spells like Gurmag Angler and Tassiger. So even though you're discarding, you're not really truly discarding in the traditional sense. Six cards for Michael Hamilton. Three of them are going to go to the graveyard. A hollow one, a mountain, and a blood gas. A little fist pump there for Barrett. Doesn't have to worry about another hollow one right now. You're still in the thick, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> it's not getting any easier for you, Aaron. That is for sure. Wouldn't be surprised to see Aaron Barrett here just go chump chump on the two copies of Hollow One. Uh, at, at this stage of the game, you know, he needs to try to buy himself time, and the infect uh, counters will make that damage decrease over time. Yeah, if he does go chump chump, chump chump, a Glistener Elves in front of Hollow Ones, that'll turn him into three threes permanently. And that'll give him a little bit of time to work with. We can't forget that right now Flame Blade Adept is a four power creature, yes. as three cards have been discarded via Goblin Lore. I believe Michael Hamilton actually has a land in the Faithless Suiting, so he could make that Flame Blade Adept even larger if he'd like to. Yeah, and his last card is a Blood Gas. 
Uh, I think he's contemplating maybe waiting to cast the Faithless Legion to get the other Black Ass on the battlefield, but that's not the game you want to play against Infect. You're not trying to grind them out, getting value out of all your cards. You're trying to apply as, as much pressure as possible, and casting Faithless Looting here for zero value is the way to do it. Yeah, you just want to try to get your opponent as dead as quickly as possible when you're playing against Infect because that's what they're trying to do to you. This isn't a value game about Flame Wake Phoenix and Blood Gas like it was in the last match against Gerard Fabiano. And I think Michael's pretty cognizant of that as he's searching up a Blood Crypt, and now he's going to play a Faithless Looting. To one, discard that Blood Gas like you mentioned, Todd, but two, Let's get that flame. Let's get that flame blade added up a little bit larger and put a flame like Phoenix into the graveyard. Yeah. So, a, a, a kind of an interesting attack here from Hollow One side, uh, with you know n he doesn't know that Aaron has no pump spells in hand, so he has to be cognizant of can the extra damages from the Glistener Elf actually kill him with a single pump spell mm -hmm. and so he might actually hold back one of the hollow ones to play a little bit of defense and that in itself could give Aaron Barrich enough time to find the pump spell he needs to close the game. Yeah I like it though here by Michael Hamilton he says let's go let's try to get you dead hopefully you don't have the nuts in your hand if you do I, I might be dead but I'm going to try to get you dead and so you got a you got a flame blade add up that is a six power creature Three from Goblin Lore, two from Faithless Looting. Those are the discards plus base one power, and then at two Hollow ones. So let's call it. Let's call it fourteen, huh? Yeah. So Barrett here very correctly assessing that he needs a pump spell right now to win the game. Well, he has a Blossoming Defense in hand. I think he drew ground spell. He's going to be able to cast both of those, and with the Glistener Elves, I think it's going to be just enough to get the job done. Well, Barrett's very quickly fetched up that land with Windswept Teeth. He's not even presenting his deck to his opponent, so he says, I'm going to fire up an Ink Moth next. I'm going to attack here for three. In fact, let's make it uh, a Become it's a become mess. mess. That is going to do it. That's, That's six. enough. That's enough by itself. Six, seven, eight, nine. In fact, Aaron Barrett's going to win in game number one here over Michael Hamilton. In fact, Look at that face. He knows he stole it. That's right. He did steal game number one there over Michael Hamilton and that Mardu Hollow One deck. You know, as good as Burning Inquiry may have been there for Michael Hamilton, it did load up Aaron Barrett's graveyard. Sure. It loaded up his graveyard. That's fair. And that is something we talked about earlier in the broadcast. You know, the Burning Inquiries fuel Delve. Whether that's from your side or your opponent's side is completely up to who draws the Delve spells. Now, of course, the question is, was Michael Hamilton supposed to attack with all those Hollow Ones that Flame Blade add up? Those Glistener Elves, well, those Infect points did add up. That's something I'm sure he'll be thinking about as he gets ready for game number two. No sideboard for this one, so just a short break. B R B. Number two between Aaron Barrett playing Infect and Michael Hamilton playing Mardu Hollow One. Cedric Phillips and Todd Anderson, we are here in the booth as Barrett was able to find a Become Immense to get the game over with. Such a powerful pump spell in the Infect deck, of course, is Become Immense. And that Burning Inquiry that Michael Hamilton played, well, he had to play it and let him have a crazy turn. But it helped Aaron Phillips' graveyard, and that's why he is plus one game here in this best of five in our semifinals. Hamilton will be on the play here for game number two. And we'll see if Hamilton can do something explosive with Faithless Looting or Burning Inquiry and tie this one up. Yeah, I mean, Mardu Hollow One, uh, significantly stronger deck on the play just because uh, cards like Hollow One can put enough pressure on your opponent on the first turn that it changes the entire landscape of the game. They become more reactive. Uh, you start putting pressure on their life total, and the decisions they have to make uh, are put on a timeline that's not something that they're used to. Mm -hmm. It's a, uh, boy, it's one heck of a deck is this Hollow One deck, but Infect's no slouch either, and... You know, part of the appeal of Infect is some players just can't interact with it all that well, or it's just much too fast to interact with. And for Barrett, it was a little bit of both there in game number two. Game number one, excuse me. We're about to watch game number two. And, you know, I ask you again, that lightning bolt, supposed to save that thing? I still don't think so. I, I still think Michael Hampton played that game uh, to give himself the best shot of winning. I think he did everything right all the way down to attacking with the Hollow Ones. You can't assume that the Become Immense number two, there's already one in the graveyard. You can't mm -hmm. imagine, you can't assume that Become Immense number two is the only pump spell that they're going to play. Yeah. Those Ink Moth Nexes are going to chip in. If you don't attack with everything, you're not even presenting lethal in the next turn, thanks to the two copies of uh, Glistener Elf that can chump block the Hollow Ones. That's true. So I like attacking there with all his creatures. I like Lightning Bolting on turn one and trying to get the free roll win. He just doesn't have another land. Did it right, got unlucky. We go back over to Aaron Barrich now. He will play an Inkmoth Nexus' land number one for Michael Hamilton. Wooded Foothills in the Blood Crypt going to bring him out of 17. And now a Flame Blade Adept. We could see an explosive second turn. His Adept could be attacking for four, five, maybe even six points of damage, depending on what Hamilton's hand does look like. Here's a question 
from Aaron Barrich's side, do you keep a bad hand every now and then in hopes that a burning inquiry no. will fix it? No. Stop. Just saying. You are a gambling man. You're a maniac. Just saying. A lightning bolt in hand here for Michael Hamilton, along with a couple copies of Flame Wake Phoenix. Cycle to street race at Hamilton, so Flame Blade Adap is going to attack here for two, but hold on a minute. A dismember will take care of that by Barrage. Yeah, he has uh, one copy in his main deck, I believe, uh, one more in his sideboard, and that just gives him a few answers to uh, potentially annoying creatures. Like, I usually play a bunch of dismembers in Infect because the card Malira. Uh, Silvok Outcast was played in a uh, a lot of like weird combo decks alongside Kitchen Finks, mm -hmm. but <laughs> she just randomly bricked your entire deck. Yep, <laughs> she's disappeared thankfully. And uh, yeah, so Dismember uh, is also significantly worse when Mono Red is a very popular deck, like the Burn decks that we see with Boros Charm and such and Goblin Guides. But right now, I think Dismember is pretty good. There's a lot of creature-based strategies. Sometimes you just need to either buy yourself time or clear a blocker out of the way for Glisten Elf. And yeah, not a lot of burn here this weekend in Roanoke at the Berglund Center for our Season 1 Invitational. You got Michael Hamilton falling down to 12. He'll fall with a blood gas, and that's not the kind of explosion Hamilton's looking for this game. He's just going to play a 2-1, pass that turn back over to Barrett. Barrett will draw. Yeah, this hand is definitely not ideal for Michael Hamilton, but he's still got some pressure. Uh, he has a card in Lightning Bolt, which is one of the better ones for this matchup, and he has some... Uh, more creatures that you can play with uh, Flame Wake Phoenix. Once again, Magic players, we do still need Plus, if he draws something like Faithless Looting, he could just go off, especially because he started with a turn one Flame Blade Adept. If Aaron Barrett just attacks for one with a, an Ink Moth Nexus, it'll, it'll... That's not good. <laughs> that, that's... It looks like that's what's going to happen. Well, you got to start somewhere. Oh, no. Let's go oh, in no. for what in fact. Nine to go for Aaron Barrich as we're going to head back over to Michael Hamilton. Picked up a copy of Tasker, but he's got like, no cards in his graveyard. Oh, no. He's got four in there. You can just cast Tasker for two mana. He can, but I'm looking for Goblin Lores and Inquiries, man, and Faithless Lootings. He's got none of that stuff going on. I'll take a two mana four five all day, every day. Yeah, you're one of those Tarmogoy fans, huh? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Teamer for life, Teamer mm. Box. No, thank you. Know, you. you know, once once I write Teamer Box uh, Part 5, <laughs> yes. you know, I'm pr I, it might be Part 6 at this <laughs> point. I don't know. I just, you know, I love me some Tarmogoyf. Give me a Vapor Snag, call it a day. See, Barrett's going to play a Breeding Pool untapped, fall down to 12. Glistener Elf and Blighted Agent going to join the battlefield. Now there's Faithless Looting, finally. A little something going on. A couple of lightning bolts in hand now for Hamilton. Looks like he's going to discard two Flame Wake Phoenixes. Maybe the Gurmag Angler will go to the graveyard. Bolt at the ready. Bolt's going to have to be pretty good, though. Yeah, this is a trap a lot of players fall into when playing as Infect. Do you main phase the lightning bolt, or do you wait for your opponent to play one pump spell and try to two for one? You should basically never wait for them to play a pump spell unless... It's your only piece of interaction, and you desperately need to two-for-one them. It's a desperation play. In this spot, Michael's got some defense with Tasker. He can block the, uh, the Glistener Elf. The problem with that, though, is that it looks like Aaron has enough mana to leverage attacks with Ink Moth Nexus and still play pump spells or protection spells. So I like a main phase bolt on the Blighted Agent, and I kind of like holding the Tasker back. But that's also playing scared, and you can't give Aaron too much time. Yeah, that's a tough thing about playing against Infect, because I'm with you. I, I definitely want to bolt the Blight Agent now. You can't block it, so you might as well just get off the battlefield now if you can. But with the Tasker, part of you wants to attack, part of you wants to sit back. I mean, right now you look at Barrett's life total. If you attack with the Tasker and he takes it, you got him at six. That's two-turn clock. Yeah, it's two-turn clock, but also he just has two bolts, so there's no more combat in that uh, scenario as well. Uh, I feel like there is a small chance, actually, that if he attacked with Tasker, Barrett would have chump blocked with uh, the Glistener Elf just because his life total was getting dangerously low at six. Well, I think this game's over because the way Aaron's playing this turn, I'll show you a couple pump spells. See you later, bro. Yeah, it looks like a Might of Old Crocia and I don't know what the other one is. Yeah, it might be a become immense. Don't think it matters. If it's a four, if it's a plus four pump spell, it's, it's a ground swell. swell. We're done. That's it. Aaron Barrett's going to win and gain number two here over Michael Hamilton. In fact, it does it again, and we haven't even gotten to the sideboards yet. It's 2 0, Aaron. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. This Just deck. making sometimes. it look easy. Yeah, this deck sometimes. How does he draw like that? I usually draw <laughs> one infect creature, dies, and then I just 
end up with two become immense, three ground swells, and a, a blossoming defense in my hand and a bunch of lands. Something about the 5 of 4 on those Louisiana, Mississippi fellas. Tom know. Ross and Aaron Barrett with Infect. You can't stop them. Look, I just want to point out, Tom Ross has never won a modern open with Infect, and I have. <laughs> ship, well. ship the chips. Yeah, okay. I mean, we, we played the same list in that tournament. He went uh, like 10 and 5. Yeah. I so, crushed okay. everybody. Sounds like he ran bad and you ran good. Yeah, I'm sure that's, that's it. That's what it's it sounds like to me. Gra yeah. uh, grass? Say, gra grass? Grass? Not grain that you're grass. grass. Not that I'm grass. I agree that you are not grass. I'm uh, not grass. <laughs> we will look at sideboards here after these quick break. It might be okay. I actually cannot. I apologize. I cannot recall if Shaper's Sanctuary protects from Grim Lava Mance. I don't know if it's spells or spells and abilities. Uh, we'll get that one on the screen, and we'll talk a little more about it in a moment. Um, I like the Relic of Progenitus because it can slow down uh, the Mardu Hollow 1 deck. That is a graveyard interaction card I want because it also affects Delve. Uh, that's about it. That's about it. Well, those are the options there for both players. They're going to take a look at their opening hands here in just a moment. And if Shaper Sanctuary does make its presence known, we will certainly take a look at it. Though, just so that you are aware, whenever uh, you target a spell or ability an opponent controls, okay. you may so draw a card. Since he knows the deck list, he knows that uh, there's at least 10 cards from Mardu Hollow One's side of the things that uh, can affect his creatures and will allow him to draw a card off Shaper, Shaper Sanctuary. You know, you want to punish decks with a lot of removal, and normally a Mardu Hollow One deck doesn't have a lot of removal, but after sideboard, we have six plus more things coming in. Both these players are going to take a look at six cards, so we will get our eyes on Shaper Sanctuary here in just a moment. It is a, uh, it's a fringe card, but I think a pretty good one here for Infect players. Mm -hmm. Whenever a creature you control becomes the target of a spell or ability an opponent controls, you may draw a card. Uh, I Rarely will you decline, <laughs> I will say that. But Shaper Sanctuary is something that I imagine Aaron has used to great effect against the decks like Mardu Pyromancer, Jund, Hobzon, if players are still playing that. Just decks that are looking to interact, and I can't forget about Jeskai Control. Oh, for sure. Uh, this card actually replaced a slot that was in the deck for a very long time in Wild Defiance. Wild Defiance being a card that whenever uh, one of your creatures was targeted by an instant or sorcery, it got plus three, plus three until end of turn. This was a means of protecting against the likes of Lightning Bolt, Lightning Helix, Electrolyze, etc. Shaper Sanctuary, however, is uh, more of a card that helps you in the rise of the Fatal Push era. All these black-based decks have moved away from Lightning Bolt and towards Fatal Push, with Hollow One being the exception. Barrett's going to leave the top card on top. We're underway. It's a mountain, and it's a yes. It could be anything. Yes. You know, if I'm Aaron Barrett, like, I don't know. I think it's probably correct to just keep seven, no matter what. Just let it happen. You it's going to be different. Just a ridiculous human. I mean, if it's close, you know, seven cards better than oh, six. What if it's not? What if it's not? What if it's not close? Here we go. Oh, yeah, there's a real skill game here. here you go. <laughs> yeah. Goodbye, Pendlehaven. Goodbye, Ink Moth. Good. That could be bad. Goodbye, Dissenters Deliverance. Deliverance. That was one I wasn't sure he was going to bring in. It is a clean answer to Hollow One. And if uh, your opponent is unable to uh, produce a Hollow One, it does cycle. Uh, it fills the graveyard a little bit for become immense, uh, but also just helps you dig a little deeper into your deck to find a threat when you desperately need one. Michael Hamilton's hand is weird, so he lost some good ones. Oh, yeah. In Grim Lava Mancer and Thoughtseize. Lingering Souls he lost as well, but he's fine with that being in the graveyard. Hollow One got to enter the battlefield. However, his Faithless Looting needs to be pretty good here. Yeah, he, he needs lands right now. He, he has access to no black mana for Lingering Souls, which is key. No black mana for Fatal Push, which is also key. But he did find a Lightning Bolt and a land, so he is able to interact with this Noble Hierarch on the first turn, if he so chooses. Hmm, looks like he's going to discard a Fatal Push and a Goblin Lore. I think we're going to see Hollow One come on in here in just a moment. Oh, for sure. You're never afraid of the natural 20 damage on turn one, unless you're playing Legacy. Then things can happen with Invigorate and Berserks. And, and there's a such. Lightning Bolt. That's going to take care of Noble Hierarch. Pass the turn back. Barrich will draw. He's picked up a Verdant Catacombs. So Interesting enough, uh, Hamilton actually chose to keep the Goblin Lore in hand over uh, the Fatal the Push, fatal push yeah. that he would need a Black Mana for. And Fatal Push being one of his better sideboard cards in the matchup, but access to zero Black Mana is well, definitely a problem. He just picked up that Black Mana, and now this. what's difficult here 
is do you actually want to play Goblin Lore now? If he'll play the land first, which I think he should. So, uh, Goblin Lore is not quite like Burning Inquiry. If you cast uh, Burning Inquiry as your last card, you don't get to keep anything. Mm -hmm. uh, so, there's no chance of hitting a Hollow One or something like that. With Goblin Lore, you know, you get uh, one extra shot at it because you draw four and then discard three at random, so you're not losing one card economy. Uh, however, in this scenario, I think Michael did this, a very similar thing to what he did uh, against Gerard Fabiano, where he had the option to play the land before he cast his randomly discard spell, and it might come back to bite him if he ends up discarding it. Well, he lost a Fatal Push, a Faithless Suiting, and a Goblin Lore, so he's going to keep the Bloodstained Mire, and he's going to keep two lands, actually. So That's yeah, fine. He has a Faithless Suiting in the Graveyard, which he can flash back. Uh, that Relic of Progenitus last turn from Aaron Barrett sh shut off a little bit of his pressure by taking away that Lingering Souls, though. If you're Michael Hamilton, you should be feeling right now, I should get at least one more turn. I don't think I'm going to die this turn. It's very difficult to kill with Ink Moth Nexus and only one mana. It requires usually requires a Become Immense and, and uh, two copies of uh, Mutagenic Growth. So now Barrett is going to deploy a Spell Skite, get a little bit of defense set up. Spell Skite, not a card you see all that much anymore in Modern because Splinter Twin is long gone, but it is here to defend these infect creatures, and few things do a better job than old Spell Skite. Yeah, it's, it's a card I really missed uh, for quite a while when I was playing with Infect. The Rise of Colgan's command out of things like Grix's Death Shadow really took a toll on it. Um, as well as uh, just more people playing stuff like Fatal Push and fewer people playing uh, Lightning Bolt. Spell Scout is very good at defending against Lightning Bolt decks because it can protect and survive the removal spell. So they need some other way entirely to deal with the Spell Scout before their bolt gets turned on. Faithful Sluting going to be flashback here by Michael Hamilton. Barrett is going to respond. That is an invocation spell pierce, sir. Yes, it is. That's a pretty good move by Barrett, even though he has to take a uh, shock damage for fetching a breeding pool, and he's going to end up taking four from this hollow one. Taking away that faithless looting means that Michael's stuck with whatever cards he has in hand, and if he's spending his turn faithless looting instead of anything else, there's a good chance he doesn't have a whole lot going on. Vines of the Vast with a draw there for Aaron Barrett. Can he kill Michael Hamilton? Well, he has not moved as fast as he normally has when he's got the kill. So I don't believe that he does at this stage of things. Though, does he want to play around Lightning Bolt or Fader Plush? Well, he's got Spell Skype, so he's in the clear there. Yeah, plus uh, Hamilton's already been uh, burning through two copies of Fatal Push, one copy of Lightning Bolt. So I think it's safe to assume that the last card in his hand is probably not a removal spell. A Blighted Agent. There's a good chance this Spell Sky jumps in front of the Hollow One as a chump blocker. Mm -hmm. Although there is some value in blocking with Blighted Agent and turning that one turn attack clock into a two attack clock thanks to shrinking its uh, power by one. Yeah, again, if Hollow One does get blocked by the Blighted Agent, in fact, will give the Hollow One minus one minus one permanently with a counter. And that means the next turn he would get to attack for three, which knocked Barrett down to one. That'd give Aaron an additional draw step, maybe two, depending on how things do shake out. Also, making it a three power creature means that Spell Sky can block it. Right, and yeah. that, that also uh, insulates him a little bit from a removal spell because he can afford to pay two life with the Spell Sky to redirect a removal spell. Yeah, then I think maybe Blighted Agent is getting ready to play a little bit, a little bit of defense here, depending on what Michael Hamilton does do. Yeah, but then you come to the problem of if you lose the Blighted Agent and then Michael just casts Lingering Souls, then you're in a world of pain. Mm -hmm. So this is actually a, a pretty tough decision for Barrich, and either block could bite him. Well, Barrich has the block. He's at four. What he doesn't know is that Michael Hamilton has nothing relevant in the graveyard and two lands in hand. So Hollow One will be blocked by Blighted Agent. Prior to it will be passed, damage will resolve. Hollow One will get a minus one, minus one counter on it from the Blighted Agents. It is a risky block, but it's one that looks like it's going to pay off for Barrich. He still has two Infect creatures with his two Ink Moth Nexus still in play. For Aaron Barrich, we know he has a Vine to the Vast Wooden Hand. You do wonder if he's ever going to get a little bit more aggressive with trying to get the kill here or not. Again, Spell Spike giving him a lot of protection. He'll fire up this Ink Moth Nexus. No spells be played, so Hamilton will just go up to two Infect. It is always scary playing against Infect because you're always thinking to yourself, am I dead? Am I dead? 
I'm not that cool. I get to keep playing. Yeah. And Barrett will pass the turn back over to Hamilton. Hamilton needs something good here, folks. Yeah, I mean, he's got these two lands kind of rotting in hand. Uh, Faithless Looting off the top can That's turn those good. into two real spells. That's really good. So here is Faithless Looting. Two cards coming. Grim Lava Mancer among those cards. Lava Mancer not looking great on this battlefield. Not the worst thing we've ever seen, but not ideal. No, Spell Sky does a great job at checking this Grim Lava Mancer from Michael Hamilton. Uh, it's possible that, uh, well, this is a fine block. That's a great block. Uh, it, it's an interesting attack, but I, I suppose the attack is kind of a free roll anyway, right? Because if he doesn't block, he goes to one. If he blocks a Blight Agent, you kill his Blight Agent. So that attack, actually, it looks bad just because Spell Sky gets to check it, but I think it's a fine because you're not going to get punished on the, other, on the way back. Right. Grim Lava Mancer going to come down after combat. Barrich going to play a Verdant Catacombs. This is a Groundswell. Yeah, and with uh, the landfall from the Verdant Catacombs, that might have been the thing he actually needed to win the game this turn. With only one card in hand, I'm pretty sure this game is over because I'm pretty sure... We had a, a Vines of the Vast... Oh, it's a Blossoming defense. defense. And since he has Spell Sky as protection, you know, even a, a, if Michael Hampton had a Fatal Push, he could just redirect it to the Spell Sky. Mm -hmm. And now Aaron's going to turn up the heat there with an Equoth Nexus, and that is going to do it. Aaron Barrett's going to win this match over Michael Hamilton. Three games to zero. The clean sweep there for your Infect player, number two overall seed. He's going on to the finals. You picked him to win the match.